Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? Definitely. Awesome. Today you're tackling something uh, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. It's called hot carrier injection or HCI. Yeah. And I know the name might sound a little... A little bit wild. Yeah, a little bit wild, a little bit out there. Right. But it's actually a really important concept. It is. When it comes to like, you know, our electronics. Especially these days. Especially these days. That's right. You know, phones, computers. Where's everything. All that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of you actually sent in some info about this. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're going to be digging into that. Yeah. Break it down. Break it down. Absolutely. Nice. So basically, hot carrier injection, it's all about what happens. Yeah. When the tiny particles inside our electronics, those electrons, right. they get supercharged. They get a little bit too excited. They get too excited. Yeah. And it can cause some uh, some issues. Still problems. Yeah, some problems. So you've probably noticed, like, as your phone gets older, the battery doesn't last as long. Right. It might be a little bit slower. Yep. HCI could actually be part of that story. Absolutely. It plays a big role. Yeah. It's kind of like a hidden gremlin. A little gremlin in your phone. In our tech. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, as our devices just keep getting smaller. More compact. More powerful. Exactly. Yeah. It's super important to understand this. Absolutely. To make sure things keep working the way they should. For sure. Yeah. So what is HCI? <laughs> well, so it's this thing where, like you were saying, mm -hmm. the electrons and holes, they're these tiny particles. Yeah. They get so energized, yeah. they're like zipping around inside these transistors. They're like on a racetrack. Yeah. A tiny That's... racetrack. Exactly. Like imagine them like zooming around, especially and... near the drain of the transistor. Mm-hmm. That's where things can get a little crazy. Things get a little bit wild there. Yeah. They pick up so much speed, they slam into atoms. Ooh. And they knock loose even more electrons. That's right. It's like a chain reaction. It's a cascade. A cascade. Yeah. Like a demolition derby, but on a microscopic scale. That's a great analogy. A microscopic demolition derby and all that energy, it can damage the transistor. Right. It causes wear and tear over time. So it's not just like a few rowdy electrons. Well, it's like a whole party. Yeah, they're getting out of control. They're getting out of control. But how does that actually, how does that translate yeah. to problems with our devices? Like, what are the consequences of this? Well, one of the biggest things is it affects the performance of the transistors. Okay. Like how fast they can switch on and off. Oh, God. You know, it's kind of like great. if you have a door mm -hmm. and the hinges are all rusty. Yeah. It's going to be slower to open and close. Ah, makes sense. And the same thing with transistors. Okay. When they're getting hit by all these hot carriers. Yeah. It slows them down. So our phones just don't suddenly die. It's like a slow decline. Yeah, it's gradual. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And along with that, mm -hmm. um, you can get increased leakage current. Leakage current, what's that? So basically it means that even <laughs> when the transistor is supposed to be off, uh -huh. a little bit of current can still leak through. Oh, okay. Like a leaky faucet. I see. Wasting water. Right. And in electronics, that leakage, it means wasted power. Yeah. Shorter battery life. Ah, okay. So that's part of why. So that's why my phone dies faster as it gets older. Yeah, could be. Okay, interesting. So to figure out how this all happens over time, mm -hmm. researchers use models. Models, okay. To predict how HCI is going to affect things. So they're trying to figure out how long yeah. those <laughs> tiny transistors can withstand this demolition derby. Exactly. They're trying to see how much they can take. Before they start to like really slow down. Before they give out. That's before they give out, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And for larger transistors, mm -hmm. they've gotten pretty good at this. Okay. But as transistors keep getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, we're talking tiny, tiny. A nanoscale. Nanoscale, yeah. It gets a bit trickier. Why is that? I would think smaller would be better. Well, you would think so, right. Right. But the thing is, at those really tiny sizes, mm -hmm. the physics start to get a little bit... Um, a little bit weird. Yeah, a little bit weird, a little bit uncertain. Okay. We're not entirely sure if the models we use for bigger transistors right. still apply at that level. It's like the rules of the game might be changing. Exactly. It's a whole new ball game down there. A whole new ball game. Wow. So this is a huge area for future research. Right. We need to figure out what's happening down there. Definitely. Okay. So we've got these models. Mm -hmm. They're kind of okay for larger transistors. Yeah. For but for the really tiny ones... It's a mystery. It's a mystery, yeah. We're still working on it. Still working on it, okay. But it's not just the size that's a challenge. Yeah. What else is there? Well, 
the physics themselves, they might actually be changing at those smaller sizes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's not just that we're shrinking things down. Right. It's like the rules of the game are shifting, too. That makes it even more complex. But it adds another layer of complexity, for sure. Wow, okay. And then on top of that, uh -huh. we also have limitations with the models themselves. Okay, like what? So to really understand all the nuances of HCI, right. we need very precise voltage models. Voltage models, okay. But the problem is a lot of the HCI testing, yeah, it's done under like ideal conditions. Like in a lab. Yeah, in a lab with a constant voltage. Mm -hmm. But in the real world, yeah. the voltage is always changing. <laughs> yeah, it's fluctuating. It's like a choppy sea. Right. So what we see in the lab, it might not perfectly match Oh, okay. How these devices behave in your pocket. It's like we're testing in a perfect environment. Yeah, a very controlled environment. But then the real world throws a curveball. All right, so we've got the size issue, mm. the potentially changing physics, yeah. and the limitations of how we test. It's a lot to consider. It's a lot, yeah. But there's one more thing. What's that? Temperature. Oh. It plays a role, too. Interesting. And it turns out mm -hmm. the relationship between temperature and substrate current. Substrate current. That's yeah. <laughs> Remember, that's ah. it's a measure of the hot carrier activity. Okay. Right. So the relationship between those two, yeah. it's not so straightforward. Really? Yeah. Like at lower voltages, okay. below 2.5 volts, mm -hmm. the substrate current, it, it can actually be more sensitive to temperature. Hmm. Okay. So lower temperatures yeah. might actually speed up the degradation process. Huh. That's counterintuitive. It is, right? Yeah, you'd think things would work better when they're cooler. Exactly. But it seems like that's not always the case. Not with hot carriers. They're a little bit unpredictable. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. Energetic hot carriers, models trying to keep up all oh, these challenges wow. as our technology keeps pushing the limits. It's a fascinating field. It is. It is. Lots to explore. So what's next? Well, you send over this information, mm -hmm. and it has a numerical example oh, okay. that walks through calculating something called an acceleration factor for HCI. An acceleration factor, okay. It'll give us a way to see how these different conditions, right. like temperature, current, all that, mm -hmm. how they affect the lifespan of our devices. Okay, I'm ready for some numbers. Let's do it. Let's see how this all plays out in a real example. Great. Okay, so we've talked about all the havoc these hot carriers can cause, especially as transistors shrink and the physics, you know, get a bit fuzzy. Yeah, it's a wild world down there. It really is. At those tiny scales. Yeah, but before we get to those numbers you mentioned, can we back up a bit? Sure. You talked about these models that researchers are using to kind of predict how this hot carrier degradation is going to happen. Uh-huh. What exactly are they looking at? Like, what are the key factors? So for in-channel transistors, they often use what's called an airing model. Airing model, okay. And essentially what it does, mm -hmm. it looks at things like the peak substrate current during testing. Okay. So remember, that's like a measure right. of how intense that hot carrier storm is. Right, right, like how hard they're hitting. Exactly. Yeah. And it combines that with something called activation energy. Activation energy, that sounds familiar. Yeah, it's a concept from chemistry. Yeah, from like way back. Yeah, but it plays a role here too. Okay, remind me, how does that fit into all of this? So basically activation energy, mm -hmm. it's like the energy hurdle that those hot carriers need to overcome okay. to really cause some serious damage. Right. And here's where it gets interesting. Okay. In this case, the activation energy is negative. Negative. Yeah. Wait, so does that mean they actually need less energy to cause damage? Kind of, yeah. A negative activation energy means mm -hmm. the rate of that degradation, it actually increases as the temperature goes down. So lower temperatures make things worse. In this scenario, yeah. That's not what I would expect. A bit counterintuitive. Yeah, usually things run smoother when they're cooler. Right. But at the atomic level, yeah. things don't always follow our everyday logic. So those hot carriers are basically saying, bring on the cold, we're going to cause more chaos. Exactly. They thrive in the cold, it seems. Wow. Okay. So we've got this airing model yeah. for the N-channel transistors, taking into account the peak current and this like weird negative activation energy. Mm -hmm. What about the P-channel transistors? Do they use the same model? It's a similar approach. Okay. But instead of looking at the substrate current, right. they focus on the peak gate current. Okay. So it's like measuring how many of those hot carriers are trying to like bust through the gate. Yeah, exactly. Like they're trying to force their way in. Yeah, gotcha. So both models are basically trying to capture 
how much of a beating those transistors are taking uh-huh. from those hot carriers, uh-huh. either through the substrate or through the gate. That's right. Okay, but the information you said also mentioned exponents yeah. and like some B factor in those equations. Ah, yes, those are important. What are those all about? So the exponents, they're often denoted as N for the N channel and M for the P channel. Okay. And they usually fall between like two and four. Okay. And what they do is they basically fine tune how much impact that peak current has. Oh, okay. So it's like adjusting the volume knob. Exactly. It's like how much we're going to amplify that effect. All right. Right. And then you've got the B factor. Yeah, the B factor. And that's kind of like a scaling factor. Okay. It takes into account all the other things that make each transistor unique. Like what? We're talking about stuff like the doping profile. Doping profile. Yeah. That's like how impurities are added to the semiconductor. Okay. The spacing of the sidewalls, the overall dimensions. Right. And a whole bunch of other like proprietary details. So it's like the secret sauce. Yeah, exactly. Each company has their own recipe. And the B factor tries to capture that. Yeah. It's like the chef's special touch. I like that analogy. So that's why these models are often called like semi-empirical. The semi-empirical. Because just... they're grounded in physics. Mm-hmm. But they also rely on a lot of experimental data and like tweaking. So it's not just like a plug and play equation. No, it's more of an art than a science sometimes. Right. There's a lot of fine tuning involved. Definitely. But with all this talk about models and equations. Yeah. Does it actually like translate into real world predictions? Can we actually say how long a device is going to last based on all this? That's the big question. Yeah. And that's where things get even more... uh, I guess, interesting. Okay. So these models, they're valuable tools. Right. But they do have limitations. Like what? Well, remember, even with that secret B factor, Mm. we're still kind of extrapolating. Extrapolating. Yeah, like we're taking what we know about individual transistors. Right. And trying to predict how a whole circuit's going to behave. Oh, okay. It's like trying to predict the outcome of a football game. Yeah. Based on how one player's doing. Right. There's a whole team involved. Exactly. There's a lot of interaction happening. Right. And with hot carrier injection, it can trigger these cascading effects. Oh, okay. That are really hard to model accurately. And we're not even taking into account those potentially changing physics as transistors shrink, right? That's another big piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Like, what if the rules change midway through the game? Exactly. It's a concern. All right. So we've got the size issue, the potential for the physics to change. Mm Mm-hmm. And didn't you also mention some concerns about how we test for HCI? Yeah, that's a crucial point. Okay, remind me. So remember how we talked about those DC test conditions? Mm -hmm. Like in a lab, nice and steady voltage. Right, very controlled. Versus the AC reality of how devices actually work in the real world. Right, right, like more chaotic. Exactly. And why is that a problem? Well, because those constantly changing voltages and currents. Yeah they can lead to hot carrier behavior that we might not even be seeing in our tests. Oh, so our testing methods might be giving us like a false sense of security. It's false. Like we think everything's fine, Mm. but then in the real world, it's a whole different story. Yeah, it's like testing a car in a garage. Right. But never actually taking it out on the road. Great analogy. So developing testing methods that really reflect Mm -hmm. those real world conditions. Yeah. That's crucial. Okay, so it sounds like we've got this whole tangled web of challenges, mm. the shrinking size, the physics may be changing, limitations with testing. It's a lot to untangle. It's a lot, yeah. But before we get lost in all of that, yeah. you mentioned that numerical example. Right, right. That might help us actually grasp how much these factors impact a device's lifespan. Yeah, let's do it. Ready to tackle some numbers. Let's break it down, see what we can learn. Right, let's dive in. Okay, let's get into those numbers. So you mentioned this acceleration factor. Uh-huh. What does that actually tell us about hot carrier injection? It basically gives us a way to compare, you know, how much faster a device might fail under harsher conditions, like a really high temperature environment compared to, say, just your typical office environment. So like one's a leisurely stroll and the other one's like a stress test. Exactly. Gotcha. So what kind of things does this acceleration factor take into account? Well, in this particular example that you sent, Mm -hmm. it's focusing on temperature and substrate current. Okay. So remember we talked about those hot carriers Mm -hmm. being like little race cars. Yeah. Higher temperatures, higher currents. Right. They essentially make those race cars go even faster. So they're slamming into things even harder. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. So how do we actually calculate this acceleration factor? 
Well, the example gives us some specific values. Okay. For temperature and substrate current. Mm. For both the office environment and the accelerated test environment. Right. It also gives us values for N. Okay. Which, remember, is that exponent. Right, right. And the activation energy. Right. Which, remember, is negative. Negative, yeah. Always a bit strange. A little bit counterintuitive. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. And the calculation itself involves plugging all those values right. into an equation mm -hmm. that basically relates the time to failure to all those different factors. Okay, so we're quantifying how much faster they can cause trouble when things heat up and the current surges. Exactly, yeah. So what kind of results do we get? Like, what does this example actually show us? Well, it shows a pretty dramatic difference okay. between those two environments. Okay. We're talking about a difference of thousands of times. Thousands of times. Yeah, wow. in terms of how long the device might last. So like one environment, it could last for years and years. Mm -hmm. And in the other one, it's like, days or weeks it could be yeah it really highlights oh. the importance of you know considering those real world conditions right so these accelerated tests they're great for understanding how things fail hmm. but it's not necessarily reflective of how they'll perform in our everyday lives exactly it's good to remember that we're not always pushing our devices to their limits Right. But thinking about these acceleration factors and these different testing conditions, yeah. it kind of brings us back to those challenges we talked about earlier. Uh -huh. The shrinking size, yeah. the physics potentially changing, right. the limitations of how we test. It's a lot to think about. It really highlights the complexity, yeah. making sure our electronics are reliable. Right. So as things keep getting smaller and more powerful, mm -hmm. what does this all mean for the future? Well, that's a good question. Are our devices doomed to just, like, slow down and die faster? Oh, uh, hopefully not. The research into hot carrier injection, it's all about finding ways to, like, mitigate this, uh -huh. to build more resilient devices. Because... People are exploring new materials, new transistor designs, right. new testing methods. It's a constant evolution. So it's like a race, right? It is, yeah. Between, like, the hot carriers and the scientists yeah. trying to keep them under control. Who's going to win? We'll see. Yeah, that's a great point. So it really is a fascinating field. Yeah, it's really With great. a lot of important implications. Absolutely. So for everyone listening out there, I think a big takeaway is that this is not just a simple problem. Yeah, it's multifaceted. It's multifaceted, yeah. And it's going to take a lot of creativity and innovation right. to solve it. Well, this has been a fantastic deep dive. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Into the world of hot carrier injection. It's a wild world down there. It is. And... As our technology keeps advancing, mm -hmm. who knows what new oh. challenges and solutions we'll encounter. That's the exciting part. It is, it is, the future is full of possibilities. Definitely. So thank you all for joining us for this deep dive. Yeah, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. See you later.